Going back to the hospital at night, Natasha dressed, sneaks into the hospital elevator. It's just as dim as it was in her dream, and no one is around. The clock on the wall, it reads 2.55 a.m. Mm, I'm not really sure why I decided to sneak up to the fifth floor in the middle of the night. Natasha enters the elevator. The door is closed as the night shift nurse returns to her desk with a cup of coffee. Natasha presses the button on the fifth floor. The door is open, and Natasha is surprised to see Chris. <gasps> Jeez! You scared me half to death! Uh, sorry about that, Natasha. Natasha exits the elevator and walks with Chris down the hall. How do you know me? I was on my way to see you. I didn't think you were going to show. Come, come on, let's talk in my room. The orderly will be back any second. Who are you, and... Chris and Natasha enter the room. She sits on the bed, and Chris closes the door. My name is Chris Hughes. I had a cancerous tumor in my brain. I was brought here for an experimental procedure. The day of my operation, three months ago, there was a huge accident outside the hospital. The survivors were brought here. I know Dr. Precipicus worked on your head to save your life. After the incident, I started to see this little Chinese boy wherever I went. First in my dreams and then in this room. He told me that he wanted us to meet. Oh my god! You seen him too? At first I thought I was crazy seeing him all over the place, but no one else did. But then, the other day during physical therapy, he actually spoke to me. That's when I knew he was a ghost. But then I had this crazy dream where you told me to come here. <laughs> I had the same dream. Well, it felt like a dream. Okay, we met. Now what? Sure. He told me that you didn't know what to do. <sighs> Natasha gets up and throws her hands up in the air. Great. That's just great. So you're telling me that some ghosts wanted us to meet for some reason? I don't think he's a ghost. And what is he? Just then there was an explosion across the street. A body comes crashing through the window and lands on the bed when Natasha was just sitting, crushing the bed. Tasha and Chris are thrown to the floor, and they look at the now-destroyed bed. The body turns out to be a burnt to a crisp Duronian. What the hell is that? It looks like a body. It's a good thing you moved when you did. Yeah, lucky me. Moving forward, uh, Natasha enters the floor for her apartment for the first time in months. She's carrying her mail. She sees a notice in the door and reads, Dear Miss Ash, we've been trying to contact you regarding your past due rent. Please contact us as soon as possible. Management. Natasha opens the door and walks into her apartment. Inside the apartment, Natasha turns on the TV. The same reporter from the accident is on. Live from the Okasa Gallery where a violent explosion last night took the life of the security guard. Police have yet to find the mysterious red diamond, which has been on display for three months. Foul play is not being ruled out. An interesting side note, this reporter was nearly killed not too far away from the explosion where one of the city's deadliest multi-car crashes in recent history happened. Many locals are starting to call this area cursed. Join me for a special report on this tonight at six. Back to you, Jim. Natasha starts to go through her mail, but she is interrupted by a bright light coming from her bedroom. She slowly approaches the half-open door. If there's a ghost in there, please don't kill me. She pops her head into the bedroom. Well, it's not a ghost. Natasha sees King Brigand with the sixth fragment in his hand, going brightly than ever before, pointing right at Natasha. He is smiling. Lucky me.